Anyways, we're going to look at some ways to separate substances today. Uh, the first is distillation, which separates chemical species based on their differences in intermolecular attractions. In other words, it typically separates based on boiling points. The ones with the weakest intermolecular forces will boil off first, followed by the ones with higher intermolecular forces. So when you do a distillation, the substances with the lowest boiling points will be extracted first and then the ones with higher boiling points. So substances with higher vapor pressures, also higher, uh, lower boiling points, same thing, they'll be extracted first. Then there is chromatography. And by now you have all done a paper chromatography experiment, but chromatography separates substances based on their preferential attraction to a stationary or a mobile phase. So you have one thing that stays put and you have something else that moves, and then you see how the substances are attracted to those two different things. So there is thin layer chromatography, which uses a mobile solvent phase and a stationary adsorbent material. And adsorbent, that's a substance that uh, your chemicals will tend to adhere to and stick to. Um, what we used was cellulose. We did a paper chromatography, uh, thin layer chroma chromatography experiment. Uh, we used five different mobile phases. The stationary adsorbent material we used was cellulose, and cellulose is a moderately polar substance. Um, it's not the most polar thing there is, but it's moderately polar. Uh, you can also do thin layer chromatography with something like silica gel, or um, you can use uh, some type of uh, metals. There's various different substances that you can use instead of paper, but the high school level, we typically use paper for chromatography because it's cheap and effective for what we do. And then there's also column chromatography, which has a stationary adsorbent. And usually these, co these columns can be anywhere from several inches tall to several feet tall. And it has an adsorbent material and you pour your uh, substances you want to separate into the column. And then based on their attraction to the material, the adsorbent material in the column, the ones that are least attracted to it will flow through the column first and start eluding or dripping through at the bottom the fastest. The ones that are most attracted to the column will flow through the most slowly. So column chromatography lets you actually collect the sample that you want, whereas thin layer chromatography, it just lets you see which substances you have in a sample and based on, you can see how they would, the order they would come out in column chromatography. So the ones that moved up the furthest on your uh, paper chromatography, those would be the substances if you used a similar material as the stationary phase in column chromatography, that'd be the same substances that come out first. There is a calculation you could make called retention factor, which is how far did the substance move compared to how far was your solvent front? And that's the reason that we drew those starting and finishing lines on our chromatograms that you should all have handy. Um, and I'd like you to kind of look at your chromatograms and see if you could kind of figure out what their retention factors would be for the various dyes. You don't need to actually make the calculations. Um, some of yours are kind of blurry and difficult to distinguish clearly. But you can see, for instance, if the solvent front moved all the way up to here, you could calculate the ratio of how far the substance moved from the origin to how far the solvent moved. Now, obviously, if your substance didn't move at all, for instance, with when we used hexane, the hexane climbed all the way up to the top, but the substance that we were testing uh, didn't move at all, so that would be a zero in the numerator. So it would have a retention factor of zero. Um, this allows you to compare things. Um, the ratio should stay the same. Um, of how far the substance moves compared to how far the solvent moves, uh, regardless of how long you let this uh, chromatography experiment run. So you're not going to have to actually calculate the retention factors. 
for this, but I want you to go through and kind of look at the ones that you had and we'll come back to those in just a second. Cause I also want to show you here's some column chromatography here. You have your column, you put your adsorbent material in there and you pack it down with some water and then you can add your mixture of substances like for instance, a red and a blue dye, and the red dye will move through the fastest, then later the blue dye comes through. And you have to keep adding some water to it or whatever solvent you're using to keep flushing your material through the column. So that shows how you can separate two different substances through column chromatography. Here's a picture of a column chromatography experiment being done in a lab, you can see the different substances clearly separating out whatever that yellow sub that pale yellow substance is, uh, has the least affinity to the stationary phase. So it goes through the fastest. 